The way in which a network is connected will play a large part in how we'll analyze and interpret it. When analyzing connectedness and clustering, we're asking how integrated or fractured the overall network system is, how these different major subsystems are distributed out, and their local characteristics. A graph is said to be connected if for any node in the graph there is a path to any other node. When the graph is not connected, then there will be a number of what we call components to it. A component is a subset of nodes and edges within a graph that are fully connected. A cluster is simply a subset of nodes and edges in a graph that possess certain common characteristics or relate to each other in a particular way. So whereas a component is simply referring to whether a given set of nodes are all connected or not, a cluster is referring to how they are connected and how much they are connected. That is the frequency of links between a given subset of nodes. In order to model the degree of clustering to a subset of nodes, we simply take a node and look at how connected a node it links to is to other nodes that it is also connected to. So if this was a social network of friends, we would be asking how many of your friends know your other friends? The more your friends are interconnected, the more clustered the subset is said to be. This clustering within a social network is also called a clique. A clique is a group of people who interact with each other more regularly and intensely than others in the same setting. Within this social context, clustering can be correlated to homophily, where homophily describes the phenomena where people tend to form connections with those similar to themselves. As captured in the famous saying, birds of a feather flock together. We might think of clustering coming from the fact that interactions between components with similar attributes will often require less resources than interactions with those with different attributes. For example, between two cultures there may be a language barrier, or between different devices on a network there might be different protocols. Or clustering may be due to the physical constraints of the resource expenditure required to maintain them over a greater distance, thus resulting in a clustering around a geographical neighborhood. Understanding the different local conditions that have created clustering within a network are important for understanding why the network is distributed out into the topology that it has, how you can work to integrate it or disintegrate it, and how something will propagate across the network. As each one of these clusters will have its own unique set of properties within the whole, making it particularly receptive or resistant to a given phenomena. For example, we might be analyzing a political network, with each cluster in this network representing a different set of ideologies, social values, and political agendas that are receptive to different messages. Or to take another example, by understanding that the different clustering groups on a computer network may represent different operating systems, we will be able to better understand why a virus has spread rapidly in one part of the network but not in another. And also, by understanding these local clustering conditions, we will be better able to approach integrating them into the broader network. What we call the clustering coefficient of a node is then a method for measuring the degree of a local cluster. There are a number of such methods for measuring this, but they are basically trying to capture the ratio of existing links connecting a node's neighbors to each other relative to the maximum possible number of links that could exist between them. A high clustering coefficient for a network is another indicator of this small world phenomena that we saw previously.